what's really interesting about Sergey is I think he's still learning. Um, the Tampa series had a whole bunch of that blocks of time without shots, and then it's Kucherov. So the, it, it, it would just spike, right? They'd get two or three great chances. Uh, Savannah Jad's power play chance on that seam. That's an incredible save. I think you have to be a veteran goalie to do what he did tonight, sit for a while, make huge saves, and then sense the last 10 minutes of the game. That's where he has to be, Sergey. So he's, he's, he's had a bit of this, and this kind of almost started happening to us in March where we had really unusual offensive games against us. Our, our defensive game was kind of rounding into shape a little bit, so we would get these blocks of time where there wasn't any action, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you, you're playing the President Trophy winner, the best team in the National Hockey League. They're getting theirs, and, and he was that good. Uh, coach, over here. <laughs> um, in the back. Um, obviously, there's a lot of leaders in that room, but what did it mean for Matthew to be the one throwing those early big hits and getting that first goal just in terms of leading the boys out there tonight? Yeah. If they spread it around here, we've had, you know, times of kind of the bark off time. And early in, in the Tampa series, he and Verhege, Matthew and Verhege, were really, really strong. I think for him, I think it's almost our team, the players have kind of come to expect it. So it's not necessarily a huge boost in that, oh, my God, Matthew scored a goal. But for him, it's kind of, that just gets him cooking. Front right, Mike. Uh, Paul, your fourth line tonight gave you yes. some unbelievable shifts. Uh, yes. you know, what, what was the key for them? <sighs> I don't know about the key. They were just on the puck and fast and detailed. I, I agree. I don't, I don't know the why of it. They, they've been good. So when you look at our playoff run, we've had uh, Ocposo come in and Lorenz come in in the Tampa series. They scored two huge goals for us in one game, and that was the difference. So we've got this kind of, I think I said it earlier, there's a competition for the fourth line until the playoffs, and then they're competing together. Lots of energy. Uh, it, it might be the best game I've seen Ryan Lombard play. So they didn't score, so it's not that. But the technical parts of his game, he's always the energy's always there, the physicality's always there. But those guys were sharp and on pucks, and and uh, I, I agree with you. That would be what I said when I came into the room at the end of the game was just to point out how good that line was for us. Back left, Luke. Uh, you mentioned Lomberg. What did you think of the goalie interference call? I thought it was right because it's the call I would want on Sergey. But the best goalies in the world need a bit of protection. I don't think there was any malice in what Ryan did. But you get in that deep to the crease, and then he is trying to get out, and he gets pushed in. I get all that. But you start that by starting in the crease fairly deep. So you know what? I, I'm sitting on the bench going, look, it's one nothing going into the call. If, we, if, if it goes our way, it's 2 nothing. times. We're exactly where we were. So I, I, I thought they got it right. I thought they – I thought – whoever's making that final call thought that was fair. I wasn't complaining about it. Uh, front right, Mark. Paul, um, can you speak to the the early on game that, that Matthew had? Even prior to the goal, he laid a couple of good hits on, and, and, and what did that goal do? It seemed to set a tone, his physicality, and, and obviously the goal. It was smart because it was a shot off the rush. It's, Instead of trying to wait for more or find more, sometimes it's just the simplicity that we need in our game to kind of set a bit of a tone. And then we got away from it. So after that, we had three pucks at the offensive line that we turned over. It was, it's not even a turnover. It was a decision that didn't work necessarily. And, and what he did, I thought, tonight is righted our team back to the simple parts of our game. So when we're yeah, this is true of uh, you always want to do more, right? These are the best players in the world, and they're capable of doing more. But sometimes the less is just way better. And it's also quite a bit smarter. And I thought he led in that department. There wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of creativity in his game. That's not a bad thing. Most of his special creativity happens in about a three-foot area around him with his wrists and his hands. And you go, how the hell did he do that? How did he tip that puck? But 
it, it's kind of playoff hockey. It's happening so fast out there. There's not a lot of room to create. And he didn't try to push that envelope. I thought that was very good of him. As a leader, especially. He's the one guy that we've had, I think, would have 114 points at one time. So you look at those players and say, that's where your creativity will come from. And when he plays a simple game, then everybody else can fall in. Left side, second row. Coach, Matthew was just in here, and he mentioned that there's a lot you can improve on. I'm sure as yeah. a coach you might agree with that. But can yeah. you just touch on what you liked? I mean, very stingy. It seemed like you guys were winning most of the battles out there tonight. Yeah. It's a, it's a fair question, and I think it's accurate. His, I think his assessment is accurate. I don't know that I want to walk you through what I liked and didn't like. I, I, in fairness, that's kind of we're, we're Look, at, I, I've got a really fairly strong idea about what Peter's going to want to improve in his game, and I got one in mind. For our, we got we got a list that we've started already going. This guy needs to be able to. This guy's got to see video. That's got to change. That's got to change, and he's going to do the exact same thing. So there'll be parts of their game that are going to look way better next game because it'll become a focus. Everybody needs the first game. The best offense tonight by both teams missed the net. That'll be something that everybody looks at, right? Because I'm not sure that the best offense was in the net. Take three more questions front right. Paul, the, the Rangers talked a lot about how hard it was to get through the neutral zone, how hard it was for them to hang on to the puck. Just what made your team so, so effective at that? It's kind of the way we play. I thought we were just okay with it, to be honest with you. It, like, I don't think that we were. Well, we gave up two breakaways. That's a neutral zone problem because there was a guy alone skating with the puck straight through it. So that's, we got to fix that. I will tell you this. All of these games are so close. The score is almost doesn't tell you anything because it's a turn of a puck. It's a puck that we blocked that they didn't or or a pass that we made, and it's two or three, and that's the difference. So in this building, they get one, they catch fire, right? Even after the kill. I mean, the major push came after after their kill, and it was a great kill. And then I don't know, I cracked a bar. It was a shit show in front of our net, and Sergey held. But that's the inflection point for me in the game. Um, we were able to survive that moment. Two more questions. Front left. This, yes. mor this morning you said the uh, change to the second line was all about Anton Lundell and his fit there. I mean, after tonight's game, I mean, how, how well can you say he uh, – I mean, how much did he contribute to the co cohesion of that line uh, yeah. that looked pretty strong throughout the game? It's plus three at the end of the game, he made one play. Here's, that's just the coach. What did I ask? I was going to say, maybe one play I didn't like. And that's what I bring up, right? The guy played a hell of a game. He's plus three, and I'm going to bring up the play I didn't like. Um, you know, there's some leadership going on there, too. So the things that that make Matthew Kachuk special is you can take a guy who's kind of coming into his third year, give him that shot, and he's encouraging that kid on the bench. You know, he's directing. He's intense with him. So Matt, Anton Lundell feels now as a – as a guy in really his second full hard year in the NHL in terms of playoffs, um, that he can contribute and he plays and he drives. Now his expectations of himself change. And that's, that's not the coaches. That's the most important person in a player's life is the guy sitting beside him, especially when you're young. That's where the real mentorship happens. I can tell him about systems and things like that. But Matthew will say, when you come in under that puck, roll your hips under here, get under that puck. That's stuff I can't teach. So, really liked Anton's game, except for the one play in the second period. And then um, I think Matthew would be the guy that you have to talk to, and Sam Bennett at, at times as well, um, f for making the movie his player at a very young age. He was really good tonight. Our last question on the left side, third row. Coach, I know it's only game one, but in the first two rounds against a team like Tampa and Boston, where there are some sort of built-in rivalries already, you mm -hmm. know, it seems like there's a little bit extra after the whistles tonight. There wasn't much of that, Correct. Uh, especially with your team. Is that a conscious effort to keep this team off the power play, knowing how dangerous it is, or, or just is it the emotion of the series just beginning? Well, I would like to think it's maturity, like that we've gotten better, that we've matured. There's no value in it after. There's a... The New York Rangers are a veteran enough team that you are not intimidating them, right? So the stuff after the whistle, there's of no value. And 
this is a more focused, more disciplined group. We've been an exceptionally disciplined team from about midway through the Tampa series. So we, and it's not the kind of discipline that we're, we're running around foolishly. We had five high sticking penalties and four tripping penalties like in the first four games of that series and then it just died. We just, so this isn't a lack of anger as the series goes, there's going to be a few more flare-ups. That's true of every series that's played in the NHL. And rivalries are built on playoff series. So as, as we get through this, th this was not a particularly physical game based on our experience. But that's more kind of the teams we happen to hit. You hit Boston twice. I mean, we had 86 hits in the first game of that game one last year. And they were all real. It was before they adjusted to, to the, new, the new program. It was 86 real hits. It was the heaviest game I've ever seen in my life. So it, it, I didn't find that that was the, a story in this game. Thank you. For okay, your time everybody. Off. Thank you.